start with a project overview. So SIL is a £6 million five-year EPSLC project, and we've got another 18 months or so left. UCL is leading a consortium of eight partners. I've put their logos there at the bottom. And the aim is to provide an energy data resource for the UK research community. So that means providing high quality smart meter and link contextual data for innovative research in the public interest. So we are recruiting and collecting this data for around eight to 10,000 households in GB. And we aim to be representative of the SMETS2 population. So people with second generation smart meters. So as you're probably aware, uh, high resolution smart meter data could be a real game changer for research. But there are substantial barriers at present to getting access for researchers. So you've got the technical barriers of actually accessing that data, the legal barriers around the sensitivity of the data, and then the financial costs of getting access. So to counter this, CIL is providing a central resource for the UK research community. So we're already funded, you don't have to pay for individual access to the data. We're providing a secure lab environment. So smart meter data is personal data. So we've got this virtual environment you can work in. Uh, our UK data service team has overcome the technical barriers to actually accessing the data on the individual meters. We provide data linking at the household level. And what I'll mainly talk today is about the observatory data set. So this is the data set of the H10,000 households, and that is for study as it's on its own or to act as a control group for your projects. And we're also going to be providing a laboratory function where researchers can recruit their own participants and we'll be able to access their smart meter data for you if you have consent. So, so far we've recruited around half of our participants and we're currently in our final wave of recruitment. So letters went out last week and we're aiming to reach hopefully 10,000 in the next couple of months. We are open for business, so we've got a UKDS study number, 8666, which you can uh, search on the UKDS website to check out all our documentation and some code. And research has already begun, so we have researchers using the data now in the secure environment. So to give you an overview of the different data sets we're using, so there's electricity data and gas data from the smart meters. We've also got weather data, a survey, and energy performance certificates. And this combines into what we're calling the CERL observatory data set. So the electricity data is daily and half hourly readings. In theory, all participants should have this. We also have export data if it's available. So if someone has solar panels, we get the net export data. And that's active and reactive power. When people sign up to CERL, they, can, uh, they give us consent to access their data and we can go back up to 12 months, depending on when they moved into the house and when they got a smart meter. The gas data is quite similar. So again, daily and half hourly readings, but not so many people have a gas mains meter. So that's 70% of our sample participants. The weather data is from the ECMWF and it's era five reanalysis data. So modeled based on readings. It's publicly available and our really resolution, uh, 30 kilometers spatially. Initially, we just were providing surface temperature, but in the next data release, we'll be providing up to around 20 more variables. And that's a little bit behind the other data sets because it's released quarterly. Now, when people sign up to sell, we ask them to optionally fill in a survey. So that's about 40 questions about the dwelling, your occupants and their attitudes and behaviors. And pretty much everybody at least starts the survey and most people uh, complete it. And that's just one-off collection. And finally, EPC, which you might be familiar with, about half of firms in the UK have an EPC. So uh, we source that externally and it's publicly available, but we link all of these data sets together. So now I'll go into a little bit more detail about the data you can expect. So we collect the smart meter data via something called the DCC gateway. So that's a messaging service and that sends us the data directly from each household meter. We get the electricity and if available gas data in half hourly and daily readings. We also get inventory data. So basic information about the meter, although we're not currently making that available for researchers in UKDS, but something potentially for the future. So our team at UKDS collect readings every single day and we then make them available on UKDS approximately quarterly In terms of the files you can expect, so there's daily and half hourly files. So these are reads for each participant for each day and for each half hour with the available energy data. 
We also create a retype summary table. So for each type of reading for each participant, there's the amount of data available with each type of error flag that we've created and some basic new statistics like the mean and the max. We're also creating a participant summary table. So that's a high level data quality summary for each participant. So that includes non-smart meter data and basic info. Thing. And I should say that the energy data includes both the raw data and these error flags we've created and some basic error correction if possible. In terms of the different read types available, so this table shows you all the different read types for the daily and the half hourly data. There's some example values in units. And you can find this table and a lot more information in the documentation we've created, which is on the UKGS website for the study. I'll just say a few things about the sensitivity of smart meter data. So consumers own their own smart meter data. It's personal data. So we write to participants and get their explicit consent for collecting their half hourly and daily smart meter data. And that's going forward until they withdraw consent or move out. Um, and we don't have a stated end date for that. And then, as I said before, historically, back up to a year if possible. So most of our data goes back to around 2019. A few of the earliest readings are from August 2018. And as we'll talk about later, all projects need to have ethics approval from the university and be approved by the SIL Data Governance Board. So the SIL survey is answered online or on paper. It's about 40 questions and it's optional. Uh, it's mostly multiple choice. And then there are some derived variables we've added in some. So things like the number of adults and the number of people in each age category. And we've also included some error flags and some basic data cleaning. Here's, this gives you an example of the types of questions we've asked. Uh, a copy of the survey can also be found on the UKDS website, the study. So things about energy and heating, things like your heating practices, plan changes to your energy efficiency, information about the accommodation, like the number of rooms, when they think it was built. And things about the household and specifically the householder at the end. So uh, how they're managing financially, if they've got an electric vehicle and their working status. And then the energy performance certificate data is the publicly available data set. It's about 80 variables and about half of our participants have that data. So it's a mixture of categorical data for things like the energy rating to G and then numerical data like the total floor area and meters squared. The weather data, as I mentioned before, it's publicly available and it gets updated every three months. So it's a reanalysis model of climate data. It's at evenly spaced locations, 30 kilometers apart. And in the data sets, each participant has a grid cell variable to link with their nearest data point. So we can do that linking. And uh, we're moving from one variable to around 20 extra variables in the next data release, which will be in a couple of weeks time. Uh, I'll just say a few things about the data governance board I mentioned earlier. So UCL is the data controller for SIL data. The data governance board of the DGB is formed of independent experts, so from industry, government, academia, and consumer interest groups. So it's independent from the team at UCL and from SIL. So they act as the data owner to review and approve data access requests. And UCL acts as the DGB secretariat, and we have a technical advisory role. So in order to access the data, you'll require accredited researcher status. Um, it's only available to UK university employers, employees for uh, legal reasons. And access is always within the secure virtual lab environment. To give you an idea of some of the projects we're planning or we started, um, we've got one project on the COVID-19 impact on energy consumption to see how lockdowns have impacted what, how people are consuming energy. Uh, we've got a project about smart EPCs, so how smart meter data can enhance energy performance certificates or provide an alternative in-use energy performance certificate. And then we'll also be producing an annual report to report on some of our smaller projects and general findings from the data. We're going to be linking CERL with the English Housing Survey, hopefully recruiting some of their participants to match up their EHS data with our CERL data. Some of our consortium partners have got projects as well. So for example, Leeds Beckett have a project characterizing building thermal response to understand the time spent in thermal discomfort as people wait for their homes to heat up in winter. And in Southampton, they're researching habitual energy consumption 
over periods of weeks and months in order to understand the potential for peak demand shifting. So that gets you a flavor of some of the projects we've envisioned, and I'm sure there'll be far more that you might be interested in doing. So if you'd like more detail, um, we've got our website and an email address for inquiries. If you'd like to subscribe to our newsletter to get updates about the project. And of course, uh, you can check out the UKDS website with that study number there. So far, we just have the conference paper about CERL, but we'll be producing a few more publications this year about how the data is collected and the data descriptor.